Once, there was a man who had a big dream. He wanted to make the most amazing dessert ever tasted in the whole wide world. He spent many years practicing and getting better at his skills so he could compete in the biggest contest ever. He gathered a team and together they created a beautiful sugar phoenix. Everybody thought he would win the contest because his dessert was so incredible. Sadly, his life was unexpectedly cut short when his own dessert fell on him. Just before he took his final breath, he felt sorry for how his life ended. He really wanted to make his dreams come true. But then, something unexpected happened. Instead of everything being over, God decided to give him a new chance at a life in a different world. He was born again as Millie Mortin, the son of an important military leader. Despite being of noble birth, Millie's father always prioritized helping their people and taught Millie about the importance of kindness. At just nine years old, Millie began training with his father to become a skilled swordsman. Although he wasn't the best and secretly dreamed of becoming a pastry chef, Millie persevered and practiced tirelessly. His father trained him with a gentle hand, using only one hand during their sessions, yet remained strict in his approach. He emphasized that dropping the sword in a real battle meant certain doom. One day, during training, Millie's mind wandered to his dessert ideas, causing him to lose his grip on the sword. It was different from misplacing a simple butter knife. After their training session, someone approached with news that breakfast was almost ready, and the general needed to review some reports. The general insisted on hearing the reports right away. The messenger delivered both good and bad news. The good news was that Millie had successfully fulfilled his promise of a plentiful bean harvest. Their territory, which has always been infertile, was now thriving due to Millie's knowledge of another world. The general became intrigued and requested more advice on improving cultivation techniques and suggested dishes. This bewildered Millie's father, who couldn't comprehend how his son possessed such knowledge about soil. Millie casually brushed it off, attributing it to whimsical thoughts. However, the mood quickly changed when news arrived that a group of 50 bandits was approaching their town. Millie felt anxious, knowing that the bandits could ravage their fields and jeopardize his dessert-making aspirations. He couldn't let the bandits crush his dreams. His father wanted to know the extent of their preparations. Unfortunately, they had only one month. His father suggested gathering the villagers and arming them, but Millie knew it was an impractical plan. They would, at best, assemble a small force of 30 men to defend their land. If the bandits managed to encircle them, survival would become extremely challenging in the long run. Millie overheard his father's conversation. They couldn't ask for help because other lords nearby had already lost to the bandits. If reinforcements arrived and won the battle, they might take over their land. Millie felt frustrated as his dream seemed to fade away. One of his father's subordinates noticed his disappointment and thought he was realizing the responsibility of becoming the future lord. The subordinate suggested using Millie as their secret weapon. During breakfast, he announced to the family that Millie would undergo the sanctification ceremony. Even though it was usually for older children, Millie's father believed he was ready. He had already shown skill in sword fighting and was very intelligent. Millie's mother was initially upset because she wanted him to enjoy more time as a child, but eventually she accepted the decision and helped him prepare for the ceremony. However, before fully accepting the decision, Millie's mother had a strange request. She called for Millie's sister, and they both smiled at him in a peculiar way. Millie knew something embarrassing was about to happen. He had to cross-dress. Cross-dressing was humiliating for Millie but he had no choice but to go through with it. They even put makeup on his face, making him look like a clown. After three days of suffering, it was finally time to go to the royal capital and complete the ritual. Millie's friends cheered him on, giving him the courage he needed. His father placed a hand on his shoulder and started chanting a spell. The air crackled with energy, and in a moment, they were teleported to the capital. Millie was fascinated by the sights and the variety of ingredients he could use for his desserts. Millie's father reminded him that he could only buy things he wanted if he passed the ceremony. 
Millie's curiosity led him to discover a new fruit called a bonkus with a tangy taste. Those are bonkas. Bonkas? They're cultivated up in the northern lands. He wanted to buy them and grow them in their territory. His father thought Millie wanted to develop the land and build an army, but all Millie cared about was making desserts. At the church, they met the panda priest who would conduct the sanctification ceremony to unlock Millie's magical abilities. The ceremony involved challenges such as drinking a bitter potion and being left in darkness. Most children would scream, but Millie spent the time thinking about new desserts. Two days later, Millie was surrounded by golden light particles that absorbed into his body, impressing his father and the panda priest. They proceeded to the first part of the ritual, where Millie surprisingly understood the meaning of a scripture read by the panda priest. Millie's father noticed everything went well. On their way home, they stopped at a market so Millie could choose his bonkas and even received a free one from a kind shopkeeper. The town had been preparing for the bandit siege for three weeks. They built a sturdy wall, secured the wells, and sealed off smaller villages to prevent the bandits from using them. Villagers sought refuge in the largest village, but the odds seemed against them with limited manpower and only three days' worth of food. Millie's thoughts were interrupted by his friends Mark and Lumi, who came to help. They gathered rocks to use against the bandits while staying safe. Suddenly, they heard the bandits approaching and rushed back to raise the alarm. The general inspired the villagers with a speech, and they vowed to protect their land. Anticipating a night attack, the general strategized the positioning of his forces. Concerns were raised, but Millie's perspective as a nine-year-old pastry chef was surprisingly taken into account. The general set off to scout the area, aiming to surprise the bandits. In the general's absence, Millie safeguarded the village. While scouting, the general observed the bandits' resources—70 men, five good horses, and captive villagers. Encouragingly, the bandits lacked ample provisions. Empowered by his magic, the general fought the bandit, swiftly defeating some. The bandit leader intervened, but the general chose to retreat. The pursuing bandits made critical errors, overlooking the villagers' trap and underestimating their hidden leader. The children's slingshot attacks surprised the bandits, causing panic. Flames engulfed the bandits, leading to their downfall. With the general and his followers, the children outnumbered the bandits, engaging in a fierce battle. Millie protected them, but got injured. Seizing an opportunity, the bandit leader took Millie hostage. Millie commanded the children to hide and used his magic to confuse the bandits. Freeing himself, he struck the leader with a rock. Mistaken for a wizard, Millie is a skilled pastry chef. So what did you think of Millie Mortine's journey? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click the notification bell. Also be sure to check out our other videos. Thanks for watching.